Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss whether or not the launching of the new Hidden Barn label is a pivotal moment in bourbon history. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Dana the Dreamer 6, Nate Weingar, and Luke Otero. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey. Oh, so yeah, we've got a fun show today. You know, when we talk about, you know, bourbon turning around and making a comeback after it was down for so long, we talk about pivotal moments, you know, Booker No hits the road to pitch his, uh, you know, s- s- uh, small batch bourbons or, uh, you know, the, the Wall Street Journal article about uh, Maker's Mark or uh, Elmer T. Lee, you know, putting together the first uh, single barrel item uh, with, uh, with Blanton's, you know, the, are these the things that turn bourbon around? And maybe we have one of these now in craft bourbon because if you look at what happened with craft beer and uh, craft beer is ahead of craft whiskey and uh, but at some point you know if you think about the early days of craft beer it was kind of a joke people slapped the, you know laughed about these small little breweries and you know they're nothing and the everything was big beer and what's happened over over the time since uh, craft beer started was suddenly craft beer began driving things and now i think really the industry is totally driven by by the craft industry and are we going to see the same thing in whiskey and bourbon i i don't know for sure but as we look back is this moment here one of those type of moments so we're going to talk about that after the break because it very well could be you're talking about there's a lot of factors here you're talking about uh, a, a craft distillery you know moving up in the world of, of bourbon with with neely family distillery being involved in this you're talking about a major player from the bourbon industry moving to uh open uh, you know start a new brand there's a lot of things at work here that could mean this is the moment but we'll get to that uh, after the break for right now dana had something that's even more important than that dana what is that you have a very important question. All right, everybody. Does pineapple belong on pizza? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's an abomination. It, it, it does not belong on there at all. No, uh, no. I, 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 I sweet to, for me doesn't work with pizza. It's, it's safer. <laughs> I like, I like, uh, in particular, meat items so like sausage and pepperoni or bacon. Uh, that's what I like on, on pizza. So I'm, I'm definitely voting no, no pineapple on a pizza. Well. <laughs> Luke, what do you think? You like pineapple on your pizza? Uh, I, you know, I was, I was going to side along with you, but when Dana brought out the prop, right? You know, you know what? I, I, I can, I can do it because the War Department likes it, and so. Oh yeah, well, there you go, there you go. What yeah. are you going to do? So what yeah, I, I, I can, I, yeah, I, I, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's not- McDo, McDo, what do you think? Uh, um, it's it's a thousand percent not for me, but you do you. I don't want to share a pizza with you. We'll just order separate. It's fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Nate, how about you? There's one thing that belongs on pizza, and that's ranch dressing. So no, no, <laughs> that's worse. Somehow that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> so Dana, I guess I'm, it's you and I. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, Dana, you like that, huh? The well, pineapple. the only way I will have it is if it's the white sauce dressing, not red. Okay. Yeah, that makes it a difference. It doesn't go well with the red. It's weird. I don't it's understand. Weird. It really does. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, th three out of five are against it. So yeah. <laughs> majority rules there. All right. Well, guess what, gang? It's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? We'll start with McNew. McNew, what do you got? Okay, so I bought this bottle today and I already broke it. Um, <laughs> I was carrying, I was trying to carry it upstairs, but apparently I just had the cork. So it already popped itself. It's rare breed. I don't think it's going to do much. <laughs> ah, decent. Ooh. That's good. Better that could be enough. That could be enough. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll have Luke go next. Luke, what do you got? I've got a bottle of smoke wagon, small batch. Uh, I don't, I don't expect much, but here we go. Okay. Nope. No, nothing really at all there. So no, no. Dana, how about you? I have a very well-loved bottle of Jack Daniels bonded whiskey. So let's see. Oh, nice. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy, that's good. Uh, Nate, what do you think? Did McNew get that or did Dana? Well, I don't want to make Dana's head too big by getting three in a row, but uh, <laughs> Dana, I think, got that a little bit. I do. I, I, I thought so, too, but I just wanted to make oh, sure. Oh, so very close. Very close. <laughs> Dana's got the lead. Uh, she's going for the three-peat, so we'll see what happens. I've got uh, Stumpy's here. This is one where I told him I wanted to buy this barrel, and but then I found another one I liked better. I said, I'll buy this one, uh, you know, next month or something like that. And he, he sold it out from under me. So he was like, uh, I couldn't help it. Uh, they came in and it was still sitting there. They, they liked it. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's the lost barrel. He gave me one bottle of it. So here we go. <laughs> Good. Very good. Um, I'm going to say Dana still has the lead, though. So that means, Nate, you're between uh, Dana and a three-peat. What do you got? So I just found this bottle. I didn't even realize I still had it. It's an OKI 10-year single barrel. It's an old, it's an old bottle. Oh, nice. And I'm going to crush this tonight. I did not know that I had this, so I'm pretty excited about that. So let's see. Uh, it's a store pick. Let me see here. And it's, it's uh, you can tell. All base. All base, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations, Dana. Yeah. Well, there you go. Dana, the three P. Cheers. Cheers. How about that? <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about Hidden Barn. And uh, was this a big moment? Is this something that uh, we'll look back on 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and say, wow, this is one of those things that caused uh, where we're at today in Bourbon? We'll do that in just a few. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky.
This is Kathy Cool, and I can't wait to pet your goat. And you're listening to the ABV Network. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about Hidden Barn, and is it a future historical moment for bourbon? Yeah, what do, what do you guys think? Luke, what do you think? You know, could this be one of those moments that ends up being, you know, the quintessential reasons why craft is really makes a big move in the bourbon world? I sure hell hope it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, I actually kind of paralleled it with uh, when uh, Dave Pickerel left Maker's Mark and went to Whistlepig and mm-hmm. you know, did what he did there. What Hidden Barn is going to do is the same thing, in my opinion. And it's, uh, I think I spoke about it earlier, how, you know, this industry is on a pretty good jet uh, trajectory right now. But uh, Hidden Barn is going to add an extra booster rocket to you. And and it's going to, in the tail of it, it's going to be a bunch of other craft distillers riding along with it. Right. Uh, And that's a good thing. I mean, and, and if you think about what, Dave did. He brought on a couple of others. You can look at Woodenville, some of the other things that he did as well. Uh, so this is this is a, a definitely a defining moment in the industry that we're going to look yeah. back in ten years and say, "Yeah, this we were here. We know Nate." <laughs> I, I, you know what? And, and here's where I, I think something like this could play in. And, uh, and, you know, because I've had these conversations before, uh, Jackie is from St. Louis. So we know that we talk about that a lot. And uh, my buddy, Adam Stump, for years, we've had this conversation. Well, well, I'll go over there. We'll just sit around at his bar. We'll drink. And we've had this conversation and be like, yeah, and it'd always be like, you know what I really want to do? I want to expand. He even had a location in mind, this, this uh, great location in St. Louis, very historic. And he's like, and he talked about, you know, man, you know, what would be the ideal thing is I buy this location. I'm the distiller, but we hire Jackie's eye can as the face. Of, but then we're like, I would never have it. She'd never leave old Forrester. Of course, that it's all just talk. That <laughs> would, I would never have in a million years. And it's so funny. It's happened that I call, I call Adam after this is announced. And I'm like, Man, you better should have made that move because <laughs> you know it could have happened. And he's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> so, so, but I, my point here, as it applies to this, those conversations may start happening now. You know, I think that it's easy for someone that, that's the size of Royce Neely's distillery to be think, man, somebody from these heritage brands, we you know, we don't have a chance. We can't. There's no. But maybe it's worth a conversation now. So, so things can start to change a little bit. Uh, you know, this kind of opens the door for for things like that. So that could play into it too, that, uh, you know, it just opens up lines of communication that maybe weren't there before only because people didn't think that, uh, those calls would be returned and, and you know, maybe they would be. So that's interesting. Nate, you're living this thing. I, I, can you, can you even fathom that the, this could be one of those important moments or is it like, I can't because I'm too close to it or what, what are your thoughts here as we're talking? About? Uh, it gave me significant anxiety to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would say this, uh, you know what, um, I don't, you know, defining moment. That's, uh, I would say that takes away from everybody that's been grinding in the, in, in the craft world and and has been, um, really, I feel like coming into their own over the last few years, like, uh, all of these and, and Steve, you know, this as well. We we've gone to several different distilleries and tasted, and the product uh, that is being produced um, is so good. Um, there's so many good distilleries yes. out across the country. And I think that's one of the things that's exciting about this that you could add is, is Jackie knows that too. And, and one of the great things that we're going to be doing uh, down the line is there, there may be a series that highlights, um, you know, some of these uh, different places. And who knows, like uh, the reality is, is um, we want to be part of the story. We want to be... Um, um, in fellowship with all these other distilleries because there's such great things happening around and we're just a very small in my eyes a very small piece of that um, and I just look forward to just being a part of that what's happening with craft and 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 you know the the, the things and the quality products that are coming out there and hope that we uh, can contribute to that that's all I can say yeah. yeah. I do think that we are seeing things change, you know, in real time as we're watching them. And I mean, if we go back five years and we talk about what's some of the the best craft whiskey you've had, I I think we'd probably talk about, you know, four or five-year-old whiskey. Now there's so many of them that have 10-year-old whiskey. It's it's amazing the number of craft distilleries that have. Now, 
they don't have a lot of it where they can take it to the market, and really get it into the hands of everyone. But that's kind of where they're heading towards. I think in the next five years, we're going to see some of the craft distilleries getting to the point where they have the stocks that they can put out a 10 year old whiskey that goes beyond just selling it out of their gift shop. A lot of those 10 year old ones are being sold strictly out of their gift shops because they've, they've held back a few, but in reality, they had to sell most of their older stock uh, as they've gone along just to make money to keep the lights going. But Five more years, uh, you know, when they've dedicated themselves to putting back more and more each year, uh, they might have enough where they can start rolling it out. And, and that starts to change things because right now they're always on this competitive disadvantage where they had this younger whiskey stocks and the heritage brands had the older and the bourbon consumer. As much as we can say about, you know, age doesn't matter if you're doing things the right way. There's still so many people that are so tied to age statements that uh, they, they feel like, you know, craft is the minor leagues and then you got the major leagues is the big guys. So, uh, but that, that level, uh, that playing field will be leveled a little bit over the next several years. So it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, but I what do you think about really this agree more because yeah. there's so many people that try to jump into it. But I mean, you got Jackie and all these people like on the team that are really good distillers and know their shit and yeah, can exactly. produce something out the gate that will be good. Because yeah. there's so many people that like, yeah, I got this good whiskey. And I'm like, you sourced it. No, yeah. that ain't what's or, to, or to Dana's point, so many times, uh, you know, you hate to say this, but some of our our, our heritage favorite distillers, uh, th- that's left to other people. They, they, their their job is is more to manage the the products and then be the face of the brand. Whereas when we're talking to our favorite craft distillers, they're actually the one making the whiskey. They're, they're they're the ones that are doing every part of it. Whereas in reality, some of those big names, eh, someone else kind of actually does the day to day stuff. They're, they're ultimately the person with their name on it responsible for it. Uh, so so yeah, that's one of the the refreshing things is you know talking to distillers like Royce Neely. Uh, I mean, he he can talk whiskey because he's actually making everything that they're selling. So it's, yeah, it's I'm super psyched for this. Yeah, yeah. McNeil, what do you want to say about this one? Um, so I think it's going to get like a cult, like following, like I want to liken it to um, Huber's um, Starlight out of Southern Indiana. Mm-hmm. Some of their single barrels are so off profile. They're so different. You're never going to get one that tastes the same. And in Jackie's interview, that kind of seems like that was a goal for her. Like she wasn't trying to make everything taste the same, which I think is great. So I think you're going to get this very loyal fan base that is going to lose their minds every time you release anything. And I think that's going to be amazing to see. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. A a, a true test uh, for me was the past two and a half years during COVID when COVID hit, they were said a lot of the craft distillers are going to go out of business. Well, I don't think I haven't heard of any that have and anything. They were nimble and adaptable and they made the changes needed to do. But they came out bigger, better, and stronger. Mm-hmm. And now I think they are poised to to place their their mark in, into the industry. And um, you know, I, I Nate, you may not see it this way, but I certainly do. This is a defining moment for craft distillers. Yeah. And, and uh, all 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 boats rise with a high tide, they say. And 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 you guys, a hidden barn is the rise of the high tide. That is going to bring some of these that have been doing it, for, like you said, grinding it out, doing this and doing that. And if you think about it, we all have had very heritage allocated and we still do in our own personal. We love it still. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. We're not going to change that. But you know what? I'm, I'm always looking more forward now to some of these craft distillers who what they're going to come out with because it's going to be different. It's going to be good. And Jackie's saying that she gets a, 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 a different palette to paint different colors and this, that, and the other, that is that everyone is going to benefit off that. Yeah. So I agree it. with you, Luke. And, and, and my, my point, what, what I've been saying a lot here recently is, uh, you know, the old days, the, the big heritage brands, the goal was to make a bourbon profile. Everyone's their, their, their production is really the same. They're using the column still They're They're, they're doing things. They're all using the same uh, barrel provider and stuff like that. Everything is uh, alligator char or whatever. Everything is basically the same. So the goal is to create the ultimate bourbon. That's not the goal of the craft. So they're, 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 what they want to do is create the best Neely family distillery bourbon or the, or, you know, or, or the best wilderness trail bourbon or the best new riff. Uh, they, they don't want to, to, you know, steal what, what has been going on forever. They want to make their own unique whiskey. And I think that's exactly. Cool. 
And I think that's going to be a big differentiator moving forward is all these smaller players as they get bigger are going to be, you know, creating all these different flavor profiles that are still bourbon, but uh, it's going to be very different than it has been in the past. And I think that's a good thing. And I think we're at very exciting times in bourbon. Hidden Barn is one of those moments that, uh, that helps define what, uh, what uh, this new age is, is going to be for sure. All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Nate, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? All right. So at, uh, on Instagram at, uh, hidden underscore barn and, or 50 at 5280 whiskey. And then at, uh, hidden barn whiskey.com. All right, Luke. Oh, he left. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay, so get up and walk away. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Santa Fe Boutique Wines and uh, Luke Otero at Santa Fe Boutique Wines.com. All right, Dana, the Dreamer, six. You can <laughs> find me at Dana, the Dreamer, six on both Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. All right, McNew. I'm on Instagram at McNew, ABV. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find them at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. That's more geared towards my writing career. But uh, if you want to find out what's going on with everything that we do at the ABV Network, check us out at abvnetwork.com because we put all of our stuff out there. So again, abvnetwork.com. And the new thing we got going on is the ABV Barrel Shop. Check out abvbarrelshop.com. Maybe you're going to come visit us in St. Louis. Uh, we have a great section on our website, Visiting St. Louis, some of our favorite things that we like to do in our fine city. Uh, it'll give you some ideas what you can do besides coming to the barrel shop. And we do have uh, discounted hotel rates at a place that's within uh, really walking distance of the uh, barrel shop, about 0.7 miles away. Uh, pretty easy walk. So check us out at abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Adios. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. 
The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.